I thank the minister for his statement. Thank you. I now give the floor to the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia. Mr. President, heads of states and governments, ministers, we thank the U.S. Presidency for convening this important high-level briefing on non-proliferation. We are very pleased to see you, Mr. President, presiding over this important meeting. Indeed, non-proliferation has been high on the agenda of this Council. It is therefore timely and relevant that we are discussing this issue at the highest level. Mr. President, a few days ago, the world paid a tribute to the late Kofi Annan. In his final UN speech in 2006, he said, and I quote, can there be any threat more alarming in today's world than that of a nuclear or biological weapon failing in the hands of terrorists or being used by a state as a result of some terrible misunderstanding or miscalculation. The more states have such weapons, the greater the risk and the more those states that already have them increase their arsenals or insist that such weapons are essential to their national security. The more other states feel that they too must have them for their security. This is indeed the reality that we are facing today. Indeed, the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction is posing grave threats to global peace and security. From the DPRK and the Iranian nuclear issues to chemical attack in Syria and Salisbury incident in the UK. Proliferation risks have become one of the most serious challenges of our time. The international non-proliferation regime is under serious challenge and Global anxieties about nuclear weapons are at the highest level since the end of the World War. As Secretary General Antonio Guterres said, said, we believe it is absolutely vital that we comprehensively address risk of proliferation. There is no other option but to strive to find a negotiated solution to some of the most difficult issues that we are facing at the moment through political and diplomatic means. We have all been observing the developments following the recent summit meeting between you, Your Excellency President, and Mr. Kim Jong-un, whose out outcome has had given us some sense of hope for the progress towards the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and the advancement of peace in the Northeast Asia. We encourage such endeavors, Mr. President, as we have a first-hand experience solving and bringing peace for the no war, no peace situation that existed for more than 20 years between Ethiopia and Eritrea through diplomatic means. Mr. President, we earnestly hope that you will maintain the momentum generated recently with the view to finding a comprehensive, peaceful and diplomatic political solution to the DPRK issue in line with the relevant Security Council resolutions. This Council needs to continue supporting such endeavors. In this regard, the talk about a follow-up summit is indeed encouraging. We also welcome the outcome of the third inter-Korean summit in Pyongyang, and we hope this will lay the foundation for the concrete action towards sustainable peace, security, and complete and verifiable denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula in accordance with relevant Security Council resolutions. This Council needs to support the relevant parties to make progress in this direction. In this meantime, we believe the implementation of the sanctions regime continue to be very critical. With regard to Iranian nuclear war, nuclear issue, we remain convinced that the JCPOA represents a significant achievement for multilateralism. We, however, understand the challenges and difficulties in the broader implementation of Resolution 2231. While we re reorganize the withdrawal of United the commitment of the remaining participating countries is critical for the full implementation of the JCPOA. We hope they will continue to exert every possible effort in addressing 
the prevailing challenges and contribute to the full implementation of this agreement, which is still remain vital for the global non-proliferation architecture. In addressing the proliferation risk posed by non-state actors, we believe the 1540 committee continues to have a significant role. Strengthening the, the, the assistance framework of this committee to member states aim to addressing the implementation gaps continue to be important in comprehensively addressing the proliferation risk posed by non-state actors, including terrorists. Furthermore, Strengthening the collaboration between the 1540 committee group and of experts and members of the analytical support and sanction monitoring team established pursuant to Security Council Resolution 5026 and 2253 concerning Daesh, Al-Qaeda and Taliban and associated individuals and entities requires attention from the Council. Finally, Mr. President, multilateral agreements such as the Biological Weapon Convention, the Chemical Weapon Convention, and the non proliferation Treaty continues to Im immensely contribute to the prevention and elim elimination of the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. At the time of great proliferation risk, it is in the best interest of all of us to pre preserve these important multilateral agreements to, the garant to guarantee our collective safety and security and ensure their full and effective implementation. Let me therefore conclude my remark by, re, by reaffirming Ethiopian unwavering commitment to continue fulfilling its international obligation by taking all the necessary measures to prevent the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and their means of delivery into the hands of state and non-state actors, including terrorists as well as by fully implementing relevant Security Council resolution in this regard. I thank you. I thank the Minister for his statement, and I now give the floor to the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Kazakhstan.